Well, a very good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the 2024 Imagine Cruising World Indoor Bowls Championships. Once again, we're live from Potters Resorts here in Hopton on Sea. Well, it's quarterfinal days here in the World Open Singles, and it's Robert Paxton against Stuart Anderson coming up straight away for you. So let's look what we have for the rest of today. Well, the other two quarterfinals, Les Gillett against Alex Marshall MB and Nick Brett against Paul Foster MB. So a really, really good afternoon of bowls. So we're almost ready here at the International Arena. We've got a great coming up, like we say, Robert Paxton against Stuart Anderson. Very interesting game. They've played each other twice and the head-to-head -head scores is 2-0 to Robert Paxton. But I'm sure Stuart Anderson will be looking at making that something a little bit different today. So we're going to go and join the BBC coverage. So have a great afternoon. Yes, thank you very much, Rishi. And it is time for our second quarterfinals match here at Potter's Resorts. And our first player out for this match, we have a man with five WBT titles to his name, including former World Pairs, two times World Mixed Pairs, and former World Singles Champion. Put your hands together for world number four, England's Robert Paxton. His opponent this afternoon has seven world titles, including two times former world singles champion, and at the start of this week lifted his third Open Pairs trophy. Ranked number three in the world, put your hands together for Scotland's Stuart Anderson. Thanks, Rishi. And you can see the position there with the, the world ranking seedings are, you know, there's just four and five. Come on, really? Who's going to call this one between it? But uh, I think I've been spoken to a few players that if Stuart Anderson can get going, we know just how good he is on the Jack draw shot. 28 meters. And if he can win that battle, then that might just be enough. But uh, 
Rob's in good form. A little bit of a disturbance there, just to people coming in. Been put on the spot, Sean. Who are you with? Exactly what you want. First ball. I love the way you ignored that question. But it's just so close to call. I think the way Stuart played in the both the open pairs and the mixed pair, pairs as well, he's in good form. Close to correction. One green. Decent second. Dad Billy comes down to watch the final stages. And of course, the Friday is a great day to be here. Four quarter finals, guaranteed to see the eventual champion. short of the jack that's unusual first end these players would have had the opportunity to practice of course but they did have a break then of about 10 minutes won't make any difference to the rink that 10 minutes really but the crowd's getting bigger we'll put the temperature up Beautiful line, just didn't push through it. It's just widening things even further. That will not help Robert Paxton unless he wants to play an adventurous shot. Plant's good, but there's a lot in the front to um, navigate. That's Rob Paxton's partner, Claire. Not surprised he's moved on to the forehand. It's an easier route to the jack. That was a great effort. One shot, stands. Zero, one, first one. Potter, duck egg blue, I think the jacket for today, in her usual seat. Jack length 29 metres.
first ten bowls have all been short of the jack. This looks like it's uh, a lot closer. Yeah, good correction from Stuart Anderson. Still just slightly off the pace, but a better bolt. 15 inches. Five inches past jack high. Shot ball. First one behind the jack as well. A little bit extra needed with this one. Starting to struggle. Right. Sat back down. So still one to Robert. Still play the one rep. Jack wasn't very helpful. One red. Good ball. Yeah, just coming off his own back ball and touching the jack means it is only one and not the two he was hoping for. Close, just needs to hold on. It just looked like it was always on the short side. One right. Nick Brett and Harry Goodwin, this morning's winner, probably still discussing the game. Nick's probably telling them where he went wrong in the first set. <laughs> Quite possibly. We'll take it all in his stride. Got a good sense of humour. Number <coughs> <coughs> six is good enough. Stuart's got a good eye in his head, so Two he'll know. Robert Paxton. Not much between them on the drawing game at the moment. Jack length, twenty eight and a half meters. Ah, my lovely friend Rosie. Rosie the Labrador, part of the Hearing Dog <coughs> program. Arguably, even more popular than Rishi. Oh, that's a big statement, Corky. It is, it is, but I think Brave it might be. Brave in that. Absolutely. We all run about the place tapping the little dog's head. It might be a bit weird if you did that to Rishi. Yeah.
Anderson has one of the smoothest deliveries in the game. Ball gets away beautifully. Into boat. The result's pretty good too. Brown, Commonwealth Games gold medalist in the power pairs, 2022 at Birmingham. There, but Two and I don't think Rob would be playing anything other than the draw here, so uh, <coughs> it's not going to have much of an effect on this end at the moment. You know, Robert thought it was quick out of his hand. Well, Stuart can rest that last ball, okay. that would be enough to make two. Yes, it certainly wasn't a given. Had to play a good ball to make Set the two. Two, three after three ends. Spectators still coming into the arena. Jack length, 26 metres. probably 15 inches away from the jack and Stuart wasn't happy. I understand why because his own standards are really into five or six inches rather than 15. Also a medalist at the Birmingham 2022 Commonwealth Games. Bronze in the same power pairs event. Those balls looked like they were coming into the head. If they were hit, they were on the draw line. Robert Paxson's weight was good, just getting the wrong side of it.
Stomach limitation, he might go with this. Oh my goodness, he's... Well, he's playing an inside line, so he's going to have to have a little bit of weight on it. Yeah, it wasn't far away to be fair. And very good pace for the job again. It's just hard to find the right line down there, isn't it? Yes, it, it looked like it was on a slightly inside line, but then it was holding. So, um, but I thought he might have been tempted to have a go. Stuart looks like he's uh, of the same mind as me. He's putting one round the back. That covers the ditch and the two respot positions. Can't cover everything, but uh, that one was a very useful one. In the backhand, he surely will be playing a little bit of weight. Well, there he goes, he's drawing. My goodness me, Rob, that's uh, that's a confident shot to take on. Obviously feeling like there's just enough space. Well, not sure about the connections. Two shots, I'm sure, Anderson. You wanted him to play pace with a third ball, didn't you? Yes, yeah, so I think it was actually quite important that he got into that head with a third one. Jack length, 27 and a half metres. <laughs> That's a great opening bowl from Stuart Anderson. He's been very consistent so far in this first set. Great reply. Super first two balls. One win. And Rob Paxton is just drawing the jack. T little touch of the jack. Fantastic ball. Stuart's bow, inch and a half. <coughs> Reset again. That's the problem with silence in the arena that any disturbance is amplified and I'm not sure what we can do about it to be truthful with you. <coughs> Difficult to manage. Green ball just fell over as that ball was coming down. And that's going to push it right onto the jack, the red one. That's going to be, going to be hard to beat. And there's a shake of head. <laughs> These things happen. Not much you can do about it. The ball was away at the time.
much better effort, but I'm sure he can do much with this because the bowls, his own bowls are not really in the best position. It's the draw. If he turns the jack, he might make two, but he'll be very happy to get close to it. Narrowed the line, put a little bit of weight on, but just holding off. The theory's right. You know, you just bring the, the line in by a bowl's width and add a shade on to it, but it's hard to get back. Safe way to play it for Rob Paxson. He can afford to reach this and spring the jack. Any contact on this green, quite enough pace. One shot, Robert Paxton. Good effort. And once again, it was a, a good choice of shot. Jack length, 28 metres. Well, the mat's up the rink a little bit and uh, the three-quarter length jack, the lines do change a little bit, that's the same in every rink, every carpet you play on the indoor game. And we've had some fantastic bowling this week and um, just proves that the carpet is more than playable. New underfelt, of course, and I think that's just tamed it a little bit. Don't like to see a rink too quick. Number two. Got a chance for this. Mm, very close, and he's to hold on. John Perfect Bob. One red. Robert Paxson coming in for shot. Three green there, but uh, 
like Robert will be thinking to himself, try and draw another shot of my little bit over, I get into good position. Doesn't want to drop down the rink. He has, I wonder. Really good shot on here for Stewart if he wants to play it on the forehand. Not easy. Not to be pushing the, the ball onto the jack too much, but you can just squeeze it. He can stick with the backhand. He's played it well so far, just uh, needs a slight correction. Yep, sticking with it. Option on the backhand of the playing onto the bow or just turning the jack through as well. over it and that's the only reason I was thinking he might change out of uh, the fact that he had played a third shot, ball and just couldn't get back to it. Set score 4-5 up to 6 ends. Three ends to go, two nine end sets, three end tie break. Jack length, 29 metres. been a bit of a battle of the draw shots so far so we haven't really seen anything else opportunities to play conversion shots and weight shots but a couple of twos scored in this set it's, the heads have been quite tight do with this except try and draw the shot plant on the red balls doesn't look right just getting into the pack again he wasn't there for a wait no Line was good, just one. pulling up short. Five short balls, unusual. Now I know one of them picked up the jack, I appreciate that, but still quite surprising. This is a good ball. Well played. It's a very good ball. Yeah. It's a tough Two draw, great. but there is a shot on the backhand with weight if he wants to play it. There's a plant on the two red balls, and the greens might just go out if he hits it right. 
If not, he'll just try and draw it. Still working with the draw. He's just staying away from any of those heavy conversion shots. That one wasn't the best to think about, really, because he had no back position. He has to hold. Yeah, it's a short ball, Jack yeah. You just get wrecked on that ball, and all of a sudden you're looking down the barrel of a potential three. But he had no back balls to work with, so probably why he didn't hit it. Stu would give that a chance. Stuart's dad, Billy, just... Uh, <laughs> Seeing himself in the pink screen. Meters. Stuart want to keep this head as tight as possible because he can probably be not be happy to lose one, but the two shot cushion into the last end is pretty good. Of course, if he can get the shot, it's a whole lot better. Two red. Still there for the draw. Paxton drawing another one, but just sitting the wrong way. He might be tempted to run this. Trouble is, he could take his own two balls out. Has to be careful. Yeah, going for the runner. That will hold out a little bit now. Will he use his own ball? Or the gap? The gap. Took out his back one. Stuart just slightly wide of the target, getting, getting the gap, taking his back well off the green. It's two down. Rob Parsons got two balls to come. The difficulty for Stuart Anderson is no, he can't really afford to have another go at this because he could take his own ball out and lose potential four. Depends whether there's two or three in it. I think there's only just the two. Oh, he's going again. This is risky. He's on a better line here. He's got the jack. Auto oh, bowl, well played, Stuart shot. Anderson. Oh. oh, that was courageous. Fortune really favours the brave, Corky. 
Yeah. Well, if you're not prepared to take chances, very hard to win major championships, but it was a very risky One shot break. and he played it to perfection and it's going to be hard to beat. Clean jack and ball running all the way through with it. Trying to edge the ball. What he was looking for there was an edge of the ball to try and squeeze it across the head. I can't blame him because it was an almost impossible shot to, to beat on the draw. Stu's got that cushion now of four shots. Robert Paxson played a good head of bowls that end to put himself in with a chance. Last couple of ends of the first set, but an incredible bowl from Stuart Anderson. Somebody's just put the bowl stickers on his glasses. Good luck with that. Jack length, 25 and a half metres. That's the right sort of starter, and you need a full house. <coughs> Just dropping short. They're not going to help because uh, the get out of jail card for Stuart and Rob up to a point is the hit shot. Uh, that's not going to help Stuart Anderson at all. <coughs> Meanwhile, Rob Paxson popping another one in, and a very good one at that. Right. So, two red. Two out of the four he needs. Yeah, uh, just like the two and a half feet. This is going to change things. Yeah, dropped in. Nice and solid on it and locked it right in the middle of those two reds. The chances of getting four shots now right. are minimal. And nicely done from Stuart Anderson. Weight was always good for the job, but the way it's tucked in, split up the two reds. I'd be very happy with that. Not sure what Rob can do here to be truthful with you because there's just nothing obvious. I don't think Stuart's bowl is going anywhere, that's the issue. Stuart Anderson's got three short bowls. Not sure about the last one, what happened there, but uh, he already had two short ones there. I don't think he was really trying to block it. But the one bowl that he has played well is locked in. And I just don't know how he's going get, to get that bowl out. Trying to run out to 
I don't know what's going to happen here. Yeah, nothing. One Not shot surprised. Paxton, first set, there, there was just really no shot. Once that ball went in there, locked in, it was more or less closed down. Rob would have known that. Well, there's not much of a pattern there, is there? Green going a little bit shorter, but Stuart Anderson had the jack more often. And Rob Paxton keeping to the fairly long ones. But again, even this set, first end, it's fairly jack long. 28 and a half meters. Not longer than Stuart Anderson has been playing by two or three meters. We use meters because those little white dots are a meter apart. But, uh, that helps the umpires to call out the jack lengths. They can work it out as they walk up and down. Tidy stuff, it really is. Just got a, a little bit of a clap. A Another tough crowd. Absolutely, tough audience out there. But expectations are high. Shot clock still runs down from 30 seconds to get the ball away, but if you're going to ask a question, it just soaks up a, a few seconds, but these guys are pretty quick, so it's never really a problem. Two green. shaking his head there again, he just can't understand why he was so far away. <coughs> so he's struggling as well. Hmm. Well, packs and lose three here. It's a bit of a soft three. Resetting, just something disturbed his concentration. Not known for uh, for doing that, Stuart Anderson. You know, he just gets on with things, but uh, sometimes it's just a, as you're about to deliver, there's a noise there and uh, expecting it the next time. was good and he just didn't get back into the centre of the rink.
second Good shot. Effort, made second. It, it would have been a relatively loose two, not in terms of the One distance, shot, but hands. just for the fact that Zero one first Rob's end. balls were so loose. One shot's fine. Jack Lang's 29 metres. Some very good drawing in this match, but uh, both players will be thinking they can play much better. Very strange. That really is. It's just struggling for pace. Yeah, you know, it's you put one down, you think, hmm, put the next one even relatively close to it, and then you're suddenly three or four feet away. Over. One green. What's the gap on, please? Uh, the gap is two and a half inches. Just getting it full. <coughs> Robert looking to do the same. Needs to fall. Don't think it's going to. One shot, Stuart Anderson. Yep. Just needed to drop off the ball. Twenty-eight and a half meters. Mm, 
I'll start from Stuart Anderson. Maybe we've both been struggling with their opening bowls, One or way. if one's nailed it, the other's had a great reply. Gap of Stewart's, please. Stewart's bowl, one inch. What you can do with this because he taps his own ball, it's likely to fall down and move the jack to the green one. Stay away from it, really. One red. Second here, slightly lacking the pace he wanted. Robert has to be very wary of this. The problem is Stuart doesn't. He can just rest up to it again, try and get to the red one. It'll touch on it, it'll give him the shot. Quicker. Oh, oh. That's the perfect angle. I think Robert will uh, run away here. One shot, Robert Paxton. Yep. No way he can improve that situation. Set score, one, two, under three. Take the one and run. Stuart Anderson thought he had that. Thornhill just playing the ball down, gets a, a little laugh and a clap. Does play balls occasionally, well, some form of it. Played against him some of the fun nights I had years ago. Jack Length, 27 it's not meters. bad, actually. I think he's behind the scenes these days. Yes, I think he is.
The bowlers are usually very good at making the correction with their second delivery. Stuart just going through. The line was good. Two red. Over, over line two. Worry about the second shot just at the moment. So far down, you can negotiate that. You're going to be close. This is coming very well if it's got the pace, which it has. Good pace, Stuart. Good mm. ball to come all the way around that front one. Come get back to the jack. One green. Robert Paxson left that. They're playing a poor third ball, short. Left the door open. Real terms, that's a loose head. Robert Paxson's got one ball in. The others are uh, some distance away. And by his standards, that's certainly a loose end. advantage during another two shots Stuart Anderson so it's called one four after four ends nice draw from Stuart Anderson to pick up the extra shot available to him take a two In a strange sort of game, there's been some very good stuff and uh, some really, not loose, but sort of the players are Jack scratching around looking meters. for consistent weight. There's also been a lot of bowls where the players thought they were better, or sort of scratching their heads because bowls didn't quite come back in the way they thought they were going to. It's a uh, five inches short of Jack High. <coughs> and suddenly it all tightens up. <coughs> Just to hold or make contact. Still good though.
a bit wrecked on the front one. Didn't have the weight. Better if he makes it past, but um, still the shot. Stuart might be tempted here. Stuart's got more of a shoulder right. now. Sort of closed down the draw up to a point, and um, the only danger is if he gets a split, the ball goes onto the jack. But at this moment in time, if the ball goes out clean, or the two balls go out clean. If he's on the forehand, he would be coming across the head, so he's changed to the backhand. Surely, yeah. Ball's good. Jack's good too. The split's the least favourable result. He's got the ball. Yep, that was good. Played it well. Yep. Going through the gap afterwards was the, the key to that. Yeah, Stuart just taking Robert's ball clean out and going away from the head, but no Jack movement to leave himself with one. Rob. Two. Two shots, Stuart Anderson. He'd normally be into that, he had a shoulder come off and it just, score, it just didn't look five. good out of the hand. Four ends to go, still plenty of time to get back. But you won't want to go too much behind now. You're five as it is, so Robert Paxson needs to put two or Jack three ends together. Meters. Lost his way for the moment. Yeah, just slightly off his game. Getting balls that we'd ex perhaps expect him to get. Just struggling to feel the pace a little bit, I think. Well, he's framed this. It should be a running ball. Staying away once again from the weight shot. Just trying to draw it off. It's very close though. There was no danger there, just playing a little bit more pace. I don't understand it in some respects because Stuart Anderson's got a chance here to pull the jack back. And if he does that, it takes that, uh, that running ball out of the equation. He's played it really well. And that's a lot better for Stuart Anderson. Just tucking that jack around the corner there, it just hides it from Rob Paxson's view from the mat. It's a much harder shot. Now this goes quick. He's in the vicinity. 
Good strike. Shot still against, but if he played that the previous ball, the jack probably would have been in the ditch. And his own ball with it. One green. Gets the good connection. Opens it up a little bit, gives himself a chance for his last bolt. Still just the one. It wasn't much on offer except the draw. Lacking a bit of pace. Yeah, it's just not there. Definitely lost his weight. One shot, Stuart Anderson. <laughs> Set score one seven after six ends. Length twenty eight and a half meters. Paxton's going to have to start moving up the gears here because this is this match is running away from him. He's six down. Three ends to go. He has to score seven shots. He must win the set. If Stuart Anderson scores a two here. Well, they'll be shaking hands. One red. It's a few more oh, like that. The red bowl and the green, the nearest green bowl on this side is 15, 16 inches. Short-term retentive memory, line and weight. Good again. Well played. And that's more, in. more like what we're used to with Phil Paxton. It's coming in here to add another. And more importantly, it's tucked away behind his own Shot bolt. <coughs> Try 
tricky one. Has to get past the front ones. He's very close. If he can hurry, uh -huh. well played. Oh, that's a great call. That really is. That's a super, super shot. One green. Stuart Anderson two down, safely past his own short bowl. Brilliant recovery shot to take one. One bowl to go. Time out called. Rob has four timeouts remaining. He has to have a little flick on it, doesn't he? And again, he has to get past the front stuff. And try and edge the ball off or push it onto the jack, but not too far. There's a, a green ball lurking at the back. So he's going for it. Oh, that's unlucky, and that's the game over. Would you believe it? He's flicked the ball in for two. Goodness me. That didn't even look possible. And because Rob Paxson can only get eight shots the last two ends, it's only a drawn set. It's all over after seven. Dad Billy will be happy with that performance. It was a strange one. Rob really never got out of the blocks. No, particularly in the second set. I mean, he only scored on one end. Stuart was able to pick up three twos in that set. Just keep on turning the ends over, ticking away. Confirmation, Stuart Anderson, two sets to nil, 9-1 in the second set after seven ends. We expected a lot from this game, we really did. Had a wee feeling that it would be down to the weight shots and who was going to get the good results. But Stuart Anderson took control early. Some great draw shots. All short balls around from Robert Paxson at that stage and then he played a very courageous shot. He binned the jack with that one perfectly. And again, taking another ball out, a couple of good runners. But Robert was in deep trouble and that's a freak result, absolute freak result. And that's the way it goes, yep. Wish your opponent all the very best. Not Robert Paxson's day. These things happen. Got the quarterfinals, got some ranking points. And you'll see the ends won. Everything will be on Stuart Anderson's side in this particular game. Well, he'll be happy with that because he probably didn't expect Rob Paxson to play an inconsistent game. But Stuart Anderson kept the head down and he's through to yet again another semi final. Yes, in the end, it was a straightforward win for Stuart Anderson. Um, you can't ever do anything about what your opponent does and what they go through on the day. What did you make of your own performance? Yeah, I think we started really well. I think both players started really well. And then, to be honest, yeah, it wasn't a classic, but listen, I'm just proud to go over the line. And yeah, I'll need to improve to, to play Harry, definitely. <laughs> well, um, yes, that's something to look forward to. But in terms of the way that you've played so far uh, through the tournament, having won it before, you know that you've got to find progression. Do you feel that that's what you're doing, that you're building and that there's a lot more to come? Yes, obviously it's been a, it's been a great tournament so far, reaching two finals and lifting one trophy, of course. But yeah, this is a long process. The days keep coming now, quick and fast. So yeah, my, as I say, I'm, I'm, I think I'm getting better as the tournament goes on. Obviously today, just wee bits here and there I need to work on and yeah, listen, every day is different, the carpet's different every day, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And just give us a little bit of an insight into that particular aspect. It is a long tournament, you know, you're here for a long period of time, obviously you mentioned the two finals that you've been in and won a trophy, but obviously you've got to go through the various stages for that, then concentrate on the singles. Do you have to uh, create a mindset for yourself to prepare and to, to progress with each different stage? Yeah, definitely. Like, every game comes up, do you, you, you need to choose. Do you go for food? Do you not? Do you need to do this? Do you do this? And it's, yeah. Listen, I've just been going away, playing some snooker with obviously Scottish contingent and that, and just, just doing things I enjoy doing and keeping the mindset right and, and being ready for the game coming up. Do you ever leave the area and go somewhere else for a little bit of a break, or do you stay here at Potters for the whole duration? 
I'm either in my room or in the snooker hall. That is it. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't travel far. No, I'm not a walker. I wish I was a walker, but yeah, I'm not. The, the surrounds is beautiful around here. Yeah, but no, there's plenty to do around Potters, and yeah, I just love it every day. What else do you need being here in Potters? Well, congratulations, Stuart. Through to another semi-final here uh, of the Open Singles uh, at the World Indoor Bowls Championships. Well, there we go, Stuart Anderson through to the semi-finals. So let's have a look at what we have for the rest of the day. Well, in around about 10 to 15 minutes time, the next quarter-final, Les Gillett against Alex Marshall, MBE. And then this evening's game for your entertainment, 7.30, Nick Brett against Paul Foster, MBE. We'll be back in around about 10 to 15 minutes time. Bye-bye for now. to do anything like that. You know, the old days of the, the boring holiday are over, I'm afraid, ladies and gentlemen.